good afternoon. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've got on okay with your home learning. It's chapter four of our book. So Mr. Gadgetman has been kidnapped and they've kidnapped him because they want, now what's it called again? They want an induction oscillator, whatever that is. And he's written a letter to Beans. They've managed to decipher it and they realise he's telling them to call the police. And chapter four is called The Police Arrive. Bean stood up. I'm going to the police. We're coming with you, Louisa said. Dead right, Anne agreed. No, you'll both be late home. Beans wrapped her arms around herself in an effort to stop trembling. It's getting late. Beans, are you all right? Louisa asked anxiously. Beans clamped her teeth together to stop herself shaking, but it did no good. No, why am I shaking so much? I think you're in shock. My mum's a nurse, so I know what I'm talking about. Anne stood up and wrapped her arms around Beans. What you need is a cup of tea or something hot, and you need to keep warm. I'll make the tea, Louisa volunteered. I'll just go and... No, we don't have time. I must tell the police, Beans interrupted. If you phone them, they'll think it's just some kid playing febrile games, Louisa said. Then I'll, I'll go to see them right this second. Beans found it hard to think straight. No one spoke as they all walked out into the hall. Beans retrieved her jacket from over the banister and put it on. The doorbell rang. I'll get it. Louisa went to the front door and opened it. Beatrice Conran, a tall man with wavy light brown hair and piercing dark blue eyes, moved to stand in the doorway. He wore black cord trousers, a blue shirt and a black leather jacket. He was an oak of a man, solidly built and very muscular, but not fat. I'm Louisa, that's Beans, I mean Beatrice. Louisa pointed behind her with a frown. Can we help you? The man's intense gaze shifted to Anne and Beans. Can I come in, he asked. We're not buying anything. Anne moved to stand beside Louisa, blocking the door. A door-to-door -door salesman was the last thing any of them needed at the moment. Beans came up and stood before her friends. I'm not selling anything, the man said easily. He took out a wallet from his inside jacket pocket. Opening it, he waved it under Beans' nose before putting it back where he took it from. I'm Detective Warner from the CID division of Clevesden Police Station. I've come to speak to your father. You're from the police? Beans blinked rapidly. Detective Warner nodded. Is your father in? No, no, he isn't, Beans said quickly. We were just coming into town to see you. When I got home, this letter was waiting for me. Dad's been kidnapped. Beans took the carefully folded letter out of her jacket pocket where she'd just put it and handed it over. With a deep frown, Detective Warner took the letter and started to read. Dad wrote the secret bit in between the lines of his other message, Beans explained. You see, he's been kidnapped. He says so. This is a joke, right? Detective Warner said slowly. Of course it isn't. Look at Dad's letter. Look, Beans urged. Detective Warner did as directed. I see. May I come in? Beans and Anne stepped aside. Detective Warner came into the house. The sitting room's through there, Beans pointed the way. Once they were all seated, Beans watched as Detective Warner read Dad's letter over again. You say your dad left you this secret message? Yes, he used a two-way pencil and answered before Beans could. Beans made the message appear by using black fingerprinting powder. The capital letters in the first message were the clue. They spelt out Beatrice read between the lines in code. Detective Warner scrutinised the note. After a few moments, he gave a low whistle. Very ingenious. But how did you know Dad had been kidnapped? Beans asked, confused. I didn't call you. Well, that's not actually why I came round, Detective Warner said slowly. Yesterday, his building society got in touch with us about a letter they'd received from your father. A letter containing a lot of money and information about one of his inventions. An induction oscillator? A what? Anne said. 
Oh, the thing you mentioned in his note. It is a bit of a mouthful, Detective Warner agreed. What about it? Beans asked with a frown. Dad gave the building society their money back. Anne and Louisa exchanged a puzzled glance. What money? Louisa mouthed. Oh, sorry. What money? Louisa mouthed. Anne shrugged. Yes, I know he gave it back and he's to be commended for it, said De Detective Warner. Not everyone would have been so honest. The building society got in touch with us at the police station, as we have more resources than they do. I came round to see your father to get more details on exactly how the thing works. That way we can alert the other banks and building societies nationwide. Beans, what's this induction oscillator thing then? Louisa asked. Dad built it to test out the specific circuits and logic functions on printed circuit boards and other stuff, Bean said impatiently. I think Dad said its full name is a programmable positive feedback induction interoscillator, or something like that. Louisa raised her eyebrows. Of course it is. I should have guessed that for myself. I don't know what that means, but it sounds dead good, said Anne, impressed. Beans turned to Detective Warner. My dad's been kidnapped. What are we going to do? I think before we go any further, you should tell me what happened on Wednesday night, just as your dad instructed in his note to you, Detective Warner said slowly. There might be a clue in there somewhere as to who's got your father. Beans looked from Anne and Louisa to the detective, wondering what she should do. I'm not sure I should tell you, Beans said uncertainly. I mean, I promised Dad, but I wouldn't tell anyone. Detective Warner held up her dad's letter, but in his note to you, he says you should tell us everything. Don't miss anything out, no matter how trivial you think it is. It might be a clue to his kidnappers. Put that way, Beans felt she had no choice. It's just that, that Dad was working on one of his gadgets on Wednesday evening, the induction oscillator. Beans began reluctantly, still feeling uncomfortable. When I got home from school, Dad needed a special kind of wire for his oscillator, so he said we should go to the DIY shop and afterwards we could have pizza for dinner. I wish my mum would do that more often, Anne said. I wish my mum would do that just once, said sighed Louisa. Anyway, Dad drove us to the DIY shop, but just before we went in, I told him to make sure he had his checkbook or his credit cards, or some money on him. Whenever we go shopping, Dad always waits until we're supposed to pay before he remembers he didn't bring any money with him. I didn't want to go through all that again. And did he have any money? Detective Warner asked. Bean shook her head. He only had one of those cards that lets you take money out of automatic cash dispense machines. You know, the ones outside banks and building societies. So we had to drive into the centre of town to use the machine outside his building society to get some money. And that's when it happened. Bean stopped talking. Go on, I'm listening, Detective Warner said gently. Dad didn't do anything wrong. I promise he didn't, Bean said earnestly. It wasn't his fault. What wasn't his fault, the detective asked. Well, Dad... Dad put his induction oscillator on the cash dispenser and gave me his card. He always lets me take the money out. He types in his number, but I do the rest. I was checking the expiry date on his card whilst Dad started fiddling about with the oscillator, typing in commands and numbers and things. Beans trailed off. And, Louisa prompted before the detective could, well, there was this funny click clicking sound and then... And then a whole load of money came spewing out of the machine, Beans mumbled. Money? You're joking, Anne stared at Beans. I wish I was, Beans said unhappily. A whole load of ten and twenty pound notes poured out of the machine, even though Dad and I tried to put our hands over the money slot to keep them from coming out. There were so many notes they started falling on the ground. It was so embarrassing. Luckily there was no one around at the time, or it would have been even worse. Beans looked at Detective Warner, her eyes wide with anxiety. Dad didn't mean any harm. Honest, he didn't. What commands and numbers did your dad type into this oscillator? Detective Warner leaned forward. 
I don't know, said Beans unhappily. I wasn't really paying attention until all the money started falling out. So how much was there? Louisa asked. £5,070, Detective Warner answered. At least that's what your dad gave back to the building society. Anne stared at Beans. Five thousand and seventy. That's all there was, I swear, Beans said miserably. Wow, Louisa breathed. Dad, Dad put all the money in an envelope with a letter explaining what had happened and posted it through the Building Society's letterbox, said Beans. The Building Society was shut, otherwise we'd have gone in there, there and then. After that, we went straight home. We didn't go out to the DIY shop or try Dad's card in the machine or anything. Besides, there wouldn't have been any point. The cash dispenser didn't have any money in it. Beans looked at Detective Warner, her eyes wide. Did he believe her? He had to believe her. Did you see the letter your dad wrote? Detective Warner asked at last. Beans nodded. Yeah, it was addressed to the manager of the building society. Dad explained what had happened and said that anyone with enough know-how could make an induction oscillator just like his that would do exactly the same thing. He offered to visit them and show them exactly what he did to get the money out so they could stop it happening in future. Bean swallowed hard. How could she make the police understand? It was an accident. Do you know how your dad's invention works? asked the detective. Your dad explained it to me, but I only got some of it, Beans frowned. Apparently, when you put your card into those machines, a computer reads the magnetic strip on the back of your card and gets your card number and the maximum amount of money you can take out at any one time and all kinds of other details. It's only when you key in your card number correctly that you can choose how much money you want to take out. Then the computer sends a signal to the electronic motor which feeds out the money. But when Dad started using his induction oscillator, electrical signals from his gadget bypassed the computer completely and just set the electronic motor going. Dad says that that's how induction in physics works, but I didn't really get the physics bit. Anyway, because the electronic motor hadn't been told by the computer how much money to give out, it gave out the whole lot. Seriously, Brill, Anne said, impressed. Hmm, the detective stroked his light brown eyebrows. And of course, the induction oscillator will make any cash dispenser in the country do the same thing. Wasn't your dad even a little tempted to keep the money? Anne asked. Of course not, said Beans furiously. It didn't belong to him. So why didn't your dad just hold the money until the next day, then go in and explain? Dad said if he held on to the money for even a day, someone might think he'd intended to keep it. Besides, he, we both just wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible. It was just sitting in our hands, staring at us. Beans's face began to burn. It sounded silly, but that's just what had happened. Neither she nor her dad had wanted to keep the money for a second longer than necessary. And now your dad's been kidnapped, Detective Warner said quietly. I'll try that again. And now your dad's been kidnapped, Detective Warner said quietly. Are you sure there was no one around when all this money came out of the cash dispenser? I didn't see anyone, Bean shook her head. And I was looking. I didn't want anyone to think we were trying to damage the machine. So what does this induction oscillator, what's it look like, asked Louisa. Beans glanced at Detective Warner. His lips were a thin, a thin slash across his mouth, his expression stern. He took a deep breath. No, oh, sorry, she took a deep breath. It's, it's sort of like one of those small notebook computers you can get. It's got a small keyboard and an LCD screen and all the bits Dad tacked onto it. Would your dad keep notes or blueprints on the induction oscillator about the house, asked the detective. Beans shook her head, then shrugged anxiously. I don't know. He might do. Tomorrow we'll find out if indeed they find, if indeed they find the blueprints for the induction oscillator. Goodness, imagine all that money coming out of a cash machine like that. I think they did the right thing putting it back. I wonder who's got 
Mr. Gadget Man. We'll have to find out. Join me tomorrow for the next chapter in the book. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you've had a lovely day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.